Hi there, my name is G. Schultz. I'm a tutor at the Edison Writing Center. Today's screencast will discuss how to write a literary commentary and what it means to argue something in one of these commentaries. So this commentary is probably for you if maybe it's your first time writing a commentary or if you've been getting feedback such as show your work, why, how, who says, I'm not convinced, do not assume your argument, how do you know, or even, wait, what? All of these uh, comments suggest that you're not necessarily wrong as to what you believe about the text, but that you don't really know how to do a literary argument. What this suggests about your writing is that you believe that literary device creates theme. And while this is fundamentally true, as X does choose Y, you first need to show the intermediate steps before you show that some literary device creates some theme. So you cannot assume that the reader will understand uh, will understand that that literary device creates that theme without showing why you think that, which is in essence why it is called showing your work. For example, if I am an older sibling and I want to sit in the front seat of the car uh, with, with the driver, I could say, um, I'm older, so I should get the sit shotgun, but I probably wouldn't get the front seat because I wasn't very persuasive. A better argument would be like, I'm older, therefore I am more mature. Because I am more mature, I am more capable of dealing with problems in an emergency situation. Therefore, I am a better candidate to sit in sit in the front seat. So although you probably couldn't ever win this argument because siblings don't want to budge, this is a far more persuasive argument as it shows better justification for the reasoning that you should be in the front seat. It's not enough to simply uh, say that um, that X does Y. You need to show why X does Y. Very similar to showing your work in math. So as an example of some things you shouldn't do, um, here, are, uh, some thing, here are some examples. So Hong Kingston's negative diction regarding Fa Mulan suggests that societal expectations of women trap them within unfair limitations. So what's wrong with this is that I do have a literary device, which you, you might know that you have to have. Um, and then also I have a theme. I say Fa Mulan, uh, I say suggest that societal expectation of woman trap them within unfair limitations. What's missing here and needs to be here to make this argument complete is why negative diction suggests societal expectations of women trap them within unfair conditions. Similarly, this is another incomplete, uh, incomplete argument um, when I say Sophocles juxtaposes the motif of fate with Oedipus's status to suggest that no person's status can exempt them from their decisions. While this is not necessarily wrong, you may notice that what I've done is I've again only said my literary device and the theme. Nowhere do I discuss what's happening in the text as a result. Um, do I connect to my thesis? Instead, I jump to my theme and assume that they'll understand my argument. So a more appropriate model for how to create a literary argument is my pyramid example that I use often in my tutoring sessions. So the base of every argument is your quote. Because if it's not within the text, it's going to be very hard uh, to support a reasonable argument. And in order to uh, build a, a successful argument, you do need to find some literary device, like we discussed earlier. So for example, Going back to our earlier example, maybe we say negative diction is our literary device. Our next, next layer of our argument is our umbrella device. And our umbrella device is whatever literary device we use in our thesis. These are always very broad literary devices, such as characterization, imagery, mood, or even tone. Um, and they can, they, Essentially, a literary device will characterize or will change the tone. Aggressive diction will alter the tone, which is why tone is such a good 
umbrella device for your thesis. So every time you make it, you use a quote and a literary device to make an argument, it's very important that you show how it relates to your umbrella device, your device in your thesis, so that you show the connections between your argument and how your different quotes support are supporting the same argument and are relevant. Probably the hardest uh, step to explain, um, but one of the most important ones in explaining why is effect on the work. An effect on the work considers how the literary device and the umbrella device change our understanding of the text. So at this point, we're considering solely um, what is happening within the text and how um, maybe this characterization alters our understanding of the text, usually in relation to our theme. And our theme is some broad social commentary that we're going to make that is outside of our text. Usually something like people are like something or people do blank or people should be like blank. So it's at that point at the top of our pyramid we have built enough layers to support um, our ending point, our theme. So let's run through some examples so that you can see all the different levels of your argument that have to exist to make your argument complete. So going back to our Hong Kingston example, we can keep the part that says Hong Kingston includes negative diction regarding Fa Mulan. But next we need to have our umbrella device. And so in my thesis, we'll assume that I use characterization. And so we'll say to characterize the townspeople as sexist and misogynistic. So what we've done here is we've identified the qualities, um, we, we've identified qualities that are created by our literary device. So there's a direct cause effect relationship between um, our literary device and our umbrella device. And our umbrella device helps connect back to our thesis since we use characterization there. Then what we'll do is we'll mention the effect right here. So we'd say through this, Hong Kingston shows how the townspeople's misogynistic beliefs cause them to underestimate Mulan. So you can see here, we're talking about the townspeople and we're talking about Mulan. We're not talking about people, but we're making the same argument that we'll make on the next step, but we're staying within the text and we're arguing something um, something that's nearly plot level but is slightly uh, more uh, of an interpretation that way our argument is not radical and jumps too far so next we would say this allows Hong Kingston to suggest that societal expectations of women trap them within unfair limitations which was originally the theme we were trying to prove but we fail to account for these, these two steps here. And these two steps help form the bridge between negative diction and societal expectations of women. We'll also discuss the Sophocles example that I used earlier. So we said Sophocles juxtaposes the motif of fate with Oedipus's status to suggest that no person's status can exempt them from the re repercussions of their actions. But in order to make this argument more complete, we can add these two middle points. So we do have our literary device here. And in this step, we're going to use our umbrella device. And for this example, what I used as sort of our umbrella device is humanizing Oedipus. So in my thesis, I would say something like, Sophocles humanizes Oedipus to suggest that no person's status can exempt them from the repercussions of their actions. So you can see that in every example, what we would do is we would show how the motif of fate, or we would show how some literary device humanizes Oedipus and the different effects that would have and how they would create theme. So then with this umbrella device being used for every example, we would say for this example that this allows Sophocles to show despite Oedipus's position as king, he also must contend with his fate. And so this allows us to show how um, Oedipus, Oedipus' status cannot um, exempt him uh, from his fate, which is a reasonable extension um, from this argument.
it's not so dramatic, and because it's still grounded within the plot, uh, it doesn't seem so unreasonable. But then we would make the jump, and we would say, we would go to theme. But it's not so much of a jump, because we know that the same thing is happening within the text. So we would say, this allows them to suggest that no person's status can exempt them from the repercussions of their actions. So, um, so what we've done here is now we've set our theme, right? This is where we were always trying to build to, but without these two steps, you're going to have a hard time scoring a good grade um, on your literary commentaries or other um, HL English assignments because you're not going to be able to show your teacher why you think something. And if you can't do that, then if they're not in agreement with you, they're probably not going to give you a very good grade. And even if they are in agreement with you, they're going to think you probably either just copied it or don't really understand it because you're making such big jumps. So it's important that to be persuasive, to write a persuasive essay, that you explain your own thinking so that you can help lead your reader um, towards the same school of thought that you have.